Hi there, uh, welcome to another video. This is a, a, a one-off video, it's not part of a sequence at all. Um, hopefully it wouldn't be too long either, this one. What I want to do is update you into how I make my overlays that go on my X-Touch controller, uh, my MIDI controller that I use. Um, let's bring my camera in, let me show you what I've got. I've got my X-Touch here and I've also got a honeycomb yoke and throttle quadrant, so it just sits on top of that on some brackets that I've found. Um, but what I need to do is to make some uh, overlays printed on uh, card to remind me what I've actually um, allocated to which control. So this is one of the templates that I made. Um, so I, I know what all the rotaries and the buttons do. Um, because I've got the um, the honeycomb yoke down the bottom here. I've also got these switches which I have to label to remind me what I've programmed on to each switch. So that was one of the layouts that I've tried. Um, these are a bit fiddly and a bit tricky and they're not great for storing either. Um, but it, it, it works. So the next one that I tried was for a different aircraft. Um, this is a, a draft one. That rather than having this that drop down, if I just have the labels at the top here, that's close enough for me to see. Oh, that's the lights, that's the heat, that's the parking brake. It just re reminds me. But the difficulty with both of those layouts was that uh, I was trying to cut circles. I was trying to leave as much space as possible to put text on. But uh, finding a cutter that cuts accurately, that you can place accurately, it, really difficult and it, it, it means it takes 20 minutes or so to actually cut all the cutouts and it still doesn't look great. So really I've gone and for a bit of a compromise um, just for speed it's much quicker to cut out rectangles and I have got enough room to put the, the um, text on it and it, they are so much quicker to cut out uh, with a craft knife and the ruler. So I'm going with that as my layout now. But because I was going to change the entire template from the circular one, I thought I'd better find a better piece of software. I've been using Microsoft Word up till now, and that's really not the right software. Uh, particularly once you've made one, you want to edit it and change it. It's very fiddly. So I did a bit of searching to find a piece of uh, vector graphic software for free. Um, and I've come across Inkscape, which is, um, it, I guess it, it's free. It, there's versions for the Mac, for PC, for Linux. It's been around for quite some time and it's very well developed. It's got some great tools in it. So I thought I'd give you a quick view of Inkscape. I'm not a graphics person at all. I know just enough to um, get done what I want to get done. Um, so. Sorry if I'm doing things slightly weirdly, but let's have a go and show you what I'm doing. So, um, it's a brand new document. I print mine out on A3. You can probably get away with A4, but the X-Touch is wider than a piece of A4 in landscape mode, so you won't get everything on. You probably miss uh, some of the buttons on the right-hand side, but you probably get all the major things on. But um, I, I just go with A3 because I've got an A3 printer and doing it in landscape is really good. So that's it, that's changed, that's happened. If I change, zoom, there it is, that's my uh, A3 page. So it's got the tools on the left hand side and this kind of uh, dialogue stuff on the right hand side. Um, the ones that you've got to drop down and hold lots of uh, different. Sort of menu functions that you can put here but the ones I use frequently seem to have migrated themselves up here uh, so that's the fill color the line color and the style of the stroke that's the menu system that's come up here and it remembers what you used last um, not just with this document it doesn't say it on a per document but per document basis it remembers what you used on the last time you used this software so if I start to draw now a rectangle, it will know that I wanted to use fill, or white fill, black outline, and one millimeter 
uh, to a half millimeter thick line. So if I just draw the rough outline of um, the X touch, because if I go into select, well, if it, you've got the uh, sizing information up here, but if I go into select mode, it's now selected, I can position it and change the size. One of the features I've not found on it yet, maybe there, maybe it's not, is to create a second object in relation to the position of the first object. Um, if it's in there, I can't find it. So I'm making everything relative to the top left hand corner, which is zero, zero on the page. I can't print bang to the corner, so I'm going to place it 20 millimeters in and 20 millimeters down. So everything is relative to this corner page, but I've chosen 20, so it makes my maths easier. Now, the width of it, the actual absolute width is 325 millimeters across and 100 millimeters down. And I'm gonna change menus here to the layers menu. Um, I want to make sure that this doesn't move. So I could create it on its own layer, but later on, I'd like things to be on the same layer so I can group them and lock them together. So rather than locking the layer, I'm going to lock that rectangle. I'm not gonna rename it. You could rename these things, but I'm just gonna lock that rectangle. So if I try to click now and select it, it's locked, I can't move it. So next trick is to uh, draw the eight rectangles that I'm gonna cut out for the rotaries. So as before, draw one approximately the right place and approximately the right size. And its position should be 35 millimeters from the edge and down. So 35, 35. And the actual size is 26 millimeters square. So that's what one of those windows for the rotaries looks like. And I need eight of them. So over here, there's the duplicate tool. So I need to duplicate that seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see it's um, added them to the list that's in the layer. So I want to move, the, there are eight of them there and I want to move the top one across. Um, I can do it uh, again by typing in, I know what the coordinate position is and the Y coordinate so the X, yeah, the, 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 it's this one here, the X coordinate, two, five, four. So we can move that into position. So I've still got seven here and one over here. And this is where, again, this distribute function comes in. What I can do is I can highlight all of the squares that I'm interested in and tell it to distribute them evenly horizontally and they are all in position now so that's it that's that job done so if we go back to my camera here uh, those are in position what I want to do now is to create these buttons here and they're all centered up underneath the rotaries so again draw a rectangle approximately the right place and size um, I'm going to position the, the X coordinate using uh, one of the align, uh, line functions in a minute. So let's get this sorted out here. And I've drawn that quite accurately, actually. It should be 71 millimeters down, and its size should be 13.7 by 11.7. Now I just need to get this lined up. So click this one first. That's the one that I want to be the anchor. I don't want anything that to move. I want this one to be added to it. So shift and click on that one. So I need to be in this tool here to do this. Let's do that again. Click the first one. Shift and click the second one. And now I want them to align their centers, which they've done. And we'll duplicate that seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I want that top one there to move across I don't want it to change the Y coordinate, so I'm just gonna hold this down. You can, of course, drag it and type the, the coordinates back in again. Uh, but let's put it roughly in position, and then we'll do the centering trick. So we'll click on that one first, shift click on this one, and tell it to align itself centrally. 
Now if we highlight all of that and do our distribution again, they're exactly in position. So if I look at my camera over here, you can see that there are actually two rows of these buttons. So we should be able to go to here and duplicate that. And the Y coordinate for that one is 91 millimeters down. So that's in position. And sorry, you did see me do that. I'll go back and show you that again, just in case. So use the duplicate function. Got two. Uh, got so you've got two of those, and then that can move. No, let's go back. Put it back. Duplicate that. So they move. Um, and it's the Y position here should be 91. Now I need those two buttons that sit over here. They're at the same height, say the same Y position. So again, we should better just duplicate those and shuffle them roughly in position. And in fact, the Y position for those is 320. The last bit on the X touch is where this slider goes. So we need another rectangle in there and we'll position that one. So again, knock it roughly into position and that should be uh, 285 across. Oh, so close, 285 and 330 down. Oh, that shouldn't be there. Hmm. I'll come back to that in a minute. Oh, I think it's 24 down, sorry. And I think it's approximately the right size, actually. Really, it should be 24, the width should be 24 millimeters. It's not critical, this one. And uh, 80. And I think um, that Y position should be 30, 33, if I remember rightly. Something, that's it, that's it, yep, okay. So uh, that's that layout there. On the um, on the yoke, I've got seven switches. Um, and what I've been doing is lining them up sort of visually here. So the switches themselves, the, the labels for the switches, um, oops, that's, that again. The labels are 18.7 wide and 26.7 deep. I have no idea why that number, but it does seem to work. And I want I need seven or so if I duplicate that. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Um, and what I've been doing is just sort of laying them out roughly by eye. Because this doesn't have to be critical exactly where they are. And then we could do a bit of tidying up. So I want to align the tops and distribute them evenly. 
and that's not bad okay so I've got room on here to create two of them and this is why I wanted to be able to unlock that one there so rectangle one unlock it because what I can do now is I can highlight everything there and group it together so they become kind of become one object which I can duplicate and then slide it down into position so I can get two printed off of the um, the same printout just to save paper and time in fact what I usually do is uh, put the text on here and print a blank so that once that one's developed I've got another blank one to use um, as a draft to write on with pencil as I'm making my choices so that's what I do it so let's have a look at putting text into it let's uh, move away um, so so I don't disturb the template this is where I do use another layer so this layer is going to be my text layer so everything I do now is going to work on the text layer and won't affect any or any of that I can't move this around at all so um, we've got a text tool here and you can choose your font and your size and all that sort of stuff but let's say I wanted to label this as comms that's my com now at the moment if I click away that looks extremely ugly it's not nice what's happened is that it's uh, kind of retained the stroke and the fill and what I want to do is to um, not have any stroke at all on this so let's highlight that and on the stroke I actually don't want any stroke at all and it looks like it's disappeared but what I want to do now is to make the fill black so clicking on here makes the fill black so take the stroke off and just use the fill and that makes it a really crisp um, So that actually makes it a very crisp piece of text. So just using the fill in black and turning the stroke off seems to be the, the best way to do this. Um, to, to choose a fill colour, you literally point at um, anything that you want to fill and just click the button like that. So let's uh, undo that let's go back to that piece of text there and if, if I want it to be in red you can click on there and it just changes it to red if it's the stroke you want to change imagine you wanted to change um, let's um, go to my layers I'm working on layer one if I wanted to change oh it's because I grouped everything together if I wanted to change all the lines on there um, if I hold down I think it's control might be shift let's go with this magenta yeah the fill um, is done oh, it is fill by default if it's the stroke you want to change you hold down the shift and click on a color yeah so hold down shift and click on it it um, changes the stroke color if it's the fill you want to change just click on the color so it's fill by default and stroke if you put um, hold down the shift on it so I'm going to change that back to being black and that's it um, it's still editable uh, if you go back into your text tool you can click in here and edit it so it's possible just to copy that paste it along and edit your text so that's really it uh, that's the so it's a bit stumbly because I've only been working this for a day or two now to work out how this works but that's it that's my template uh, already done and it's, it's so much quicker to develop okay thanks for watching and I'll um, get back to you later with a few more aircraft